Hey everyone, let's get painting. I'm here uh, with you to paint this llama. You should have the, in your bag, you should have the canvas and a pattern. And I don't think there's any instructions. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's your pattern. Remember if you want to trace the design or at least the shape, you're more than welcome to do that. Um, just go ahead and use just a regular like number two pencil, something that has graphite in it works best. Um, shade the back of it, turn it over on your canvas, put it wherever you'd like on your canvas, and then go ahead and trace. So, we're going to get started with our canvas. You, um, I need more workspace. Anyway, you're going to have um, just the blank canvas, but then I used a light, a real light blue color background on mine. You can pick whatever background color you'd like. I just used a really light color when I get ready to paint. Um, today I made one that's a little more, uh, a little deeper blue teal color. So we'll see which one I like best. I really like this one with the with the real light colors. It makes him stick out more, I think. But let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start with uh, painting the background. Do that, let it dry. So I've gone ahead and done my background, let it dry, and I'm ready to get painting uh, with my llama. So I'm I'm not going to draw or trace on here. That's entirely up to you. The only thing that I am going to do, I'm not tracing the whole entire thing, but I'm going to get an idea of where I want his eyes and his nose. That's the, the biggest part of uh, what I'm going to draw today. So that'll give me an idea of kind of where I need to uh, start and stop my, my llama and his fur. This one has kind of a kind of a big nose, but more like a almost like a cat nose, where it comes down the middle, right underneath. So I went ahead. You can see that pretty well. I went ahead and drew where the eyes would be and his nose. It's just to give me an idea of where to get started. I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, by putting just a base coat of the white where I want it to be. Don't worry about the fur right now. We'll get back to that. So um, I know in the pattern, his ears are really, really dark. So I did his body and his um, face and everything in white. And then I did his ears in a gray. So um, I went back over them to give him a little bit of hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get started with my base coat. And I just had um, I just have the basic shape. I can always go back and add more of uh, his hair and try to make it fluffy. That was the, the mo most difficult part was trying to make it look fluffy and, and airy and hair airy and hairy. Mm -hmm. So if you when you paint your background, if you want to trace on your design first, um, that way you know where not to put the color. I am I may need, because this one is so dark, um, I may need two coats of, um, of the white. So you can see as I get started here, it's show, the background color is showing through a little bit. Might be okay once I get the grays and stuff in. You may not even be able to see it. I may just need uh, one coat on there. So I'm gonna continue putting in his uh, face. And again, I didn't put the ears in with the white. I just used the white on his um, on his face and body. And it's fine if it's a little wispy. So there you can see it kind of did uh, more of a wispy, hairy, uh, instead of a straight line. I'm gonna go back and, and 
whisk that out. I'm not going to make it as straight as it is now. Otherwise, you'll see the straight line when you get ready to do the fur. So you want to make sure you get that done before, um, before it dries. And if you get a little too big or you feel like you're getting a little too big, maybe your llama is a little fatter than, than uh, others, which is fine. So go ahead and get the rest of my white in. And again, I want to make sure that I get a little bit of the wispy whites on the outside so when I add more, um, it will bring out more fur. Again, it's not an exact science. Canvas is yours. You can do what you want with it. Um, again, you can paint over. If you don't like what you have when you get finished, you can always paint over it. You can always give it to someone that uh, you don't like. Or you can give it to someone that has to like it, like you know, a parent or a child or something like that. Someone like that. Okay. So. When I paint, I'm going to go ahead and paint around his eyes, even though he has some, almost looks like he has some hair in front of his, his eyes. And you want to make sure that you get them even, or as close to even as you can. a little strange so we'll see he'll get better no worries just keep painting till you like it and if you really don't like it cover it up and paint something else that's the one good thing about it you don't have to uh, stick with what the picture is if you don't want him holding a flower or her I'm not really sure but if you don't want your llama holding a flower and you want something else or nothing at all, that's fine. You don't have to put it in there. So I don't want you to feel like you have to do it exactly like the picture. It doesn't take a whole lot of paint, even though it, well, we tend to think it's going to take more paint than it actually does. So work with... Uh, one color and then if you get too much you can always put it back in the jar as long as you didn't mix your colors together I'd be so happy when we can get back in class and do this in person it's much nicer to do it in person although I love all of you and I appreciate you being here He kind of looks, uh, hmm, I don't even know what he looks like. So, it's okay if yours doesn't look like a llama. That's okay. We're still working. It'll get there. I'm going to go ahead and use some of the gray. I felt like his ears were, in my first one, were pretty dark. So, I'm going to try a little bit lighter shade and see if I like that better. I didn't clean up my brush because it is gray. Um, it's okay if the white blends in. You're gonna put some white hair or fur over that anyway. So uh, you don't really have to worry about that. And he's got some tall, skinny ears. too fat, but that's okay. We will just keep on painting. He has one that's more turned in, uh, and then one on the left is kind of pointing out to the side. So we'll see how how we like these when we get finished. And don't make um, where it comes into the white. Don't make it a straight line because you're not going to be happy with it once you get finished. It 
it's not it's supposed to blend not um, not be uh, just so uh, solid or so it needs to blend in some sure that I'm I'm happy with that color of gray it looks more looks more brown on here so I'm going to try a different gray I wasn't happy with that one and you're just gonna basically keep going until you are happy with it so in an effort to save you some time, let's go ahead and use, now I have a, a fan brush. If you don't have one of these at home, that's fine. You can always use a paintbrush, an old paintbrush, and use it to pull out some of the hair, and that'll give it a lot more uh, wispy feeling to it. So as I'm painting, hopefully you can see this, I'm gonna just pull out some of the hair so he looks like he's got some wispies to him crazy hairs going on and I just go all the way down put some inside even though you don't really see them at first you will um, see them when when you're finished in addition I'm gonna add just a little bit of a, a gray, um, and I'm using the one on the that we used on the ears, which is more of a brown gray. And you can just um, let's see, start to see it a little bit. And let's see, I had some down here in his chest. can just put in as much as you want or as little as you want and this is just to give it some some depth um, some dimension so that you can add um, so he looks like he has we don't want patches um, so we're doing it just um, just a subtle hint of color so that he doesn't look like he has too many patches so <clears throat> over here and see if you don't have the right gray that you're looking for that's fine just use some black and white and try to um, um, <clears throat> mix and match I love to mix paints so don't feel like you have to stay with a certain certain color or shade that's in the bottle you can mix your own Looks like I need to get busy getting some more paints. So let's go ahead and continue um, working on his face. I'm using black for his eyes and um, the top of the nose. I used a a gray grayish brown or I'm sorry grayish black and that will give me uh, more of a highlight on the top of his nose and then underneath his nose where his nostrils are I did black because you want those to be darker and then um, just a really faint line coming down here and then more of like a smile on his uh, on his face for his mouth let you see that so again a lighter color up here towards the top and then you can get a little darker as you go down and then his nostrils um, black and then a really faint line I had mine too big to start with and then I was able once it dried to go back in and and fill it in um, so he looks more like he has a shadow here so it looks like it gives it some depth you can see here on the sides um, the the gray part makes it recessed and then the whiter part is going to stick out more 
large. So he will look like he has depth where you want his face, his, his muzzle to stick out more. You'll have a little bit more gray around here. Don't make a circle. Break it up a little bit because obviously it's going to look like you stuck his nose on there. So just make it real subtle, real light marks. If you get too much, let it dry and then paint over it. The good thing about acrylics is that you can paint over without too much trouble. And then um, I went ahead and put the black in for his eyes and a highlight. Don't forget your highlight. It makes him look glassy. So um, go ahead and put a little white highlight in there. Make sure it's on the same side. So if the light were coming in, you, you know, in the same direction, so he's going to have a highlight. So this one would have, um, you know, light coming in this way. Putting the highlight in there would be um, in the same direction. So he has a highlight on both eyes. And then I'm going to go ahead and put his eyes in on this one. If I can find the right brush. Or I can throw it on the floor. All right. So now I've got, got my brush. I'm going to go ahead and put in this eye. And I want him to be as even as possible. I could have his head tilted a little bit, but they would still be the same size. that I like this darker blue that I used. I think I like the lighter one better. Thank you. I don't know. I just feel like it looks nicer. I'm gonna try to get um, try to paint as much as you can see try to get these as even as possible. And if you have a little bit of the blue, you know, you didn't paint quite up to the line, that's okay. Um, you, or if you get one eye bigger than the other, that's okay too. Maybe they're too big right now. I don't know, my <clears throat> first one I did are more round than oblong, so I'm trying to compare the two. So, whoops. So there you can see um, the first one is more rounded and this, this one here is more oblong. I think I like the round better. So just play with it and try to see what you like. Um, once you get finished we can um, go back because I don't I don't like his eyes that big so we can go back we can uh, brush out or clean out our brush from the white I'm sorry from the black I don't know, I don't know what I'm saying do I all right and then let's pick up a little bit of white mine's not quite dry I'm going to fill in where the blue is showing through. And I'm just going to come in a little bit and see if I can make his eyes just a little bit smaller. And again, it's better if you wait till it's dry, but I'm impatient. And make sure when you're finished that you um, you blend out your paint in the direction you want your hair to go. Otherwise, it's going to look like you just have a circle. Now there, you can still see the more of a circle around his eye. I kind of like this one smaller better than the than the other one. So get those to match. Um, I found some other paint a lighter a lighter gray 
So I'm gonna go ahead and, and put some in. So I'll put some in there, some down here. Again, if you want, you can use um, that fan brush or your, oops, or your um, toothbrush to get that in there. And I got a little bit of black mixed in, that's okay. It's just gonna look like he's got a variety of hair colors. So, and I want some darker colors up here around his muzzle. I try not to get the big, big glob of paint. I try to spread it out more, and the more you the more you spread it um, and use it in thin layers, the more hairy it will be. So, keep going. We got our hair all the way down here. So you can see that. Sorry about that. Kind of looks like a string rabbit. I don't know what he looks like. All right. Attention, students, staff, right. others you may. Okay, so when you work at the school, you have fire drills. So now we're at part two of our video, <laughs> minus the fire drill. All right. So I um, have been adding a little bit of paint and keep, keep going. And you want to paint in the direction you want your line. So um, you wouldn't, you want your hair to be coming out of his body and then the top would need to go up. So if you went across, you're gonna see those lines and it's gonna look kind of silly and, um, because it's not in the direction that you need it to go. So we'll just pull the hair out a little bit. And I'm gonna add, I think a little bit of the black, kind of like that. going to have a little bit more color. I'm going to go ahead and add some of the white in too so he's not quite so um, divided into colors. If I can get some, some white in there, I think that'll make it blend a little better. And the fact that I'm using the same gray in his fur down below will help as well. one ear looks a little better than it did. Um, we'll keep on going with this and you can work till you till you like it till you get it done. Okay so I had this gray line from where I started painting. I didn't like the line as well so I'm gonna go back over and uh, use my fan brush and just paint back over that line where it started. to go um, with your fan brush and make more of a more of a fur. And this kind of this patch here I felt like it was it was too gray, too much and too solid. So I'm gonna use my fan brush and kind of whisk over it so it looks a little more blended better. Alright, so you'll just continue to do that. Use your, um, you can go ahead and use your liner brush and get some of that, some of his nose done. Finish the other ear like you did the first one. And remember, it's got a highlight, so it's going to be lighter on the top and then darker as you go down. His nostrils, solid black. And 
as you can tell, I have more paint on me than I do on the canvas because that's why I can paint, apparently. I get into everything. I'm not really patient enough for it to dry. So he got his nose painted. It's probably going to need another coat. Um, I'm going to use a little bit darker in there the next time, so I'll give it some more depth. I know this guy doesn't look the same as the other one, but that's okay. It doesn't have to. So I'll just keep working until I'm happy with it. Keep adding. Um, then when you get to the flower, when you get ready to do, I'm going to add his mouth um, so we know where. I'm just going to do a, a really thin line down here in the center of his nose. I don't want to get it too white or too dark, so I'm just going a little bit at a time. And then it's going to curve around. starting to get a little personality here in a little bit. You don't need to just sit and watch me paint. Um, so I'll probably stop before I get finished with this one. But you'll get the idea. And again, just keep keep trying. If you don't like it, I painted and painted and painted um, until I liked it. So you can see I don't really like his mouth. I feel like it's too um, too big here. But Remember to look at it from about 10 feet away, so that'll give you an idea of what it looks like to other people. Because we're our own worst critic, so um, so if you don't like it, just keep keep painting. All right, so when you are painting his flower. Let me grab this other one. When you're painting his flower, he looks like he's holding it in his mouth. So obviously you don't want to come straight across. So um, one thing that you can do is draw a line so you have an idea of where it should come out over here because it needs to look like it's going straight through his mouth. So if you were to put um, this stem, you know, down lower, up higher, it would look off kilter from this, this stem. So you want to make sure it looks like he's going straight through his mouth. So you'll have a little bit sticking out on, um, on the right side, and then most of the flower here on the left side in this void of color. You can make your flower whatever color you'd like. I just used a liner brush. I made my stem, and I did a couple leaves. Again, really straight lines, um, not real leafy, if you know what I mean. Not real big and bulky. So, and then um, down here, more of where a green where the flower comes together at the base of the flower. And then the um, petals, I just used just a regular uh, flat brush that you can use and just pull them. You're going to pull them towards the center, so you'll have to move move your um, 
petals, the ones on the outside here, are going to come in towards the center. The ones on this side towards the green are the back side. That's the back side of the petal. So you want it to go down towards the green part. So as you're painting, you're going to paint so that your, um, your lines go more towards the green because that's the back side of the petal. And again, <clears throat> you'll see some of the back side is in a darker color. If you use pink, you'll use a, a darker pink. You can use other colors as well. Um, and so um, that's going to give you the lines and the depth that you're looking for. So I hope you've enjoyed the video, even though it was in two parts. And I hope you have a great holiday. Take care.